told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Cause you're trying to stay Hey, today we get to go on one of my favorite trails, Elephant Hill in southern Utah. This is one of the most scenic yet fun trails that I've done uh, since getting Jeeps a couple of years ago. The trail is located just south, or just at the south end of the Needles District in Canyonlands National Park and it requires a day use permit that you do need to get about 24 hours before you use the trail. That's the only way to get that permit. So you need to get on and use that and get that permit quickly. One of my favorite parts of this trail actually is the beginning of the trail. You get to come up this really tight switch back on some sandstone that's just nicely layered. It's almost like driving up little miniature staircases. Halfway up the climb on top of Elephant Hill, there is a turnaround that you can turn around and drive up to the top and get a nice little look over the uh, parking lot. And again, pretty tight, but it's fun, it's nice. This is one of my favorite trails just because of the interesting terrain and the beautiful canyon views that you get on this trail. Again, this is a fun little spot. You drive out and get to look over the parking lot, do a three point turn, then head back up onto the top of the hill. Now, if you are afraid of heights, this may be a little bit of a tricky spot at the very beginning, but the rest of the trail gets much better and this is probably the most exposed that you are to cliff edges on the entire trail. So as you head up this, this tight little switchback, know that this is probably the scariest part of the trail and also just the beginning. Elephant Hill is rated as a level four in difficulty on off-roading trails. So it's recommended that you have a slightly modified vehicle, something like a Jeep Wrangler with a two inch lift, 33 or 35 inch tires, and as usual, recovery gear. As always, when you're traveling off-road situations, carry recovery gear, travel with friends, make sure your vehicle is safe and one spec that you would not want to be out in the wilderness with faulty equipment. Make sure you can trust your friends and look out for each other. You don't want to be doing things that put yourselves in unnecessary compromises or dangerous situations. Once you've reached the top of Elephant Hill, you get the chance to go down the famous switchbacks, which at one point of the switchback actually allows you the opportunity to reverse backwards down a section because there's not enough space to do a full turn as you exit the switchback. It's a little bit hairy and a spotter is recommended, but if, even if you don't have a spotter, you can do it with your mirrors and just drive carefully.
as you can see here that the backing up section does cause a little bit of a traffic jam and in our case with our multiple vehicles we were not as fast as the group catching up to us and so we did cause a little bit of a log jam here but it's better to be safe than in a hurry even if there is traffic Now this weekend, we did have the fun opportunity of having six of our drivers actually never have driven Jeeps off-road before. And this was their primary voyage in their four-wheel drive vehicles into the desert. We were lucky enough to rent vehicles from Barla Jeeps, which always has fantastically equipped vehicles. And every single person driving felt confident and well-equipped on the trip today. And as you'd expect, there were no issues. We got in and out safely no body damage, no undercarriage damage. And it was very evident that the equipment that you bring does impact the uh, fun that you get to have during the day. Looking back, the very first time I came on Elephant Hill, I was driving a 2014 Wrangler Sport uh, with basic equipment, did have a two inch lift and 35 inch tires. And even at that time with more of a basic setup, the Jeeps handled this trail easily. If you have a basic modified Jeep, this is a great trail for you. And if you're new to jeeping in general and want to just try something out that's both scenic and challenging at the same time, this is one of those trails that lets you to see what it's all about, not get in over your head too quickly, but feel challenged while you're doing it. That is probably what makes this my favorite trail in the lab. It's not too difficult, but the scenery and what you get to see while you're driving is just amazing. And as you travel further and further down the trail, the Needle District name becomes more and more evident. There are these tall spires, beautiful cliff edges, small slot canyons, and eventually a whole bunch of wonderful uh, fissures that you get to go and walk through. And they call those joints. So if you're looking at the rock from Google Maps, you look down, you can see that the actual rock has split and there's these long cracks some of them are actually perfect width for walking through some of which you get to drive through and it's it's a place like no other As you travel up through the canyon, this section right before you exit the ravine does get a little tricky. These rocks are a little bit close and the terrain itself has been dug up just a little bit. So as you drive through here, tire placement's important. Speed is important to keep it slow. Momentum needs to stay going. But overall, this is a fun little tight spot, little squeeze, a little bit of overhang from the rock. And this was one of the only places where we felt like we really had to pay a lot of attention to driving the vehicles rather than enjoying the scenery around us. That said, paying attention to where we're driving was all scenic and it's always awesome on this trail. Even in a spot like this, look at the way that the rock has aged. You can see where the water flow comes down and rolls underneath the rock face and we are lucky enough to drive right up to it, underneath it, and looking at those spires in the distance is just amazing. What a great valley.
after you exit this last little climb, you get to come up to one of the most famous parts of this entire drive, and that is the Devil's Crack. Now the Devil's Crack is one of those joints that we talked about earlier that is exactly wide enough to fit a four-wheel drive vehicle through. Now, if you have something like a original Hummer or maybe one of the new Hummers, this may be a little tricky for you. I've seen Raptors squeeze through this, but in a Wrangler, it is still tight. And you can see here as I squeeze through this, that my right wheel is just a little bit far over and I had to bring it over to the left just a little bit to keep my truck from climbing that wall. But if you squeeze through that little bit, you actually have enough space on both sides of the vehicle, just fine with a Wrangler or Gladiator, thing like that and super fun you can actually touch both sides of your hands on the walls passenger side and driver's side at the same time and drive right on through so fun little spot you don't get to do this very often and once you've cleared the crack you then get to go and visit the devil's kitchen the devil's kitchen is a fun little campground space with four different campgrounds that you can stay at and from there you can actually walk back into different fissures and explore those joints. Now we didn't have time to do that. So we kept on moving on and we were moving on to the joint trail, which is further down the trail for hiking and climbing, exploring those joints. Now the last little uh, obstacle through that is this little zigzag through these walls. And in a Wrangler, it's a two point turn in the gladiator. It was a five point turn getting over this ledge and trying to clear that wall with the front bumper. So, had to be a little bit careful. We had a little rubbing, but for the most part, everyone did well. And from there on out, it's easy trail until you get to the joint trail where you get to hike. And in the joint trail, you get to go th through those joints see the fissures and actually walk through some very Indiana Jones-esque scenery, which are 40 to 50 foot tall cliff edges. Start at the bottom, you get to walk to the top and, and see some great scenery. And again, there's just nowhere else on earth like this. At least not that I've seen. It's locations like this that remind me why I got into off-roading and why I got into exploring places that are less traveled. Because when you're out here and you see what the world has to offer outside of a city, outside of your daily pace, you remember that there's a lot more to life than the work and the daily grind that you're doing. After that, you come back the way you came to get out but instead of turning right and going back in towards the devil's kitchen, you get to go straight forward through another set of cracks. So this is an example of the extra length of the gladiator trying to get through that zigzag obstacle. Uh, clearly the gladiator you can see has a lot more difficult time getting through and getting straightened up, but once it was aligned, it was able to climb up and out just fine. And for equipment reference, the Gladiator is on 37 inch Falcon Wild Peaks all terrains and is running a Mopar 2 inch lift, which was barely enough for this obstacle, but did really well on everything else. Now, the Gladiator, because it is longer, has a much lower breakover angle and it makes it a lot more difficult with the exact same equipment as a Wrangler to get over some of these taller obstacles. So, if you have a Wrangler, a 2.5 inch lift on 35s is plenty of truck. A two and a half inch on 37s is even better. Uh, any more than that, and you do start to get a little top heavy, but everyone has their own preference. And this trail definitely is a two inch lift, 35 inch tire ideal for a Wrangler four door. And again, you can see here as the Wrangler goes through this little crack, how tight it really is.
And from that point on, it is pretty smooth sailing. The road is sandy and then transitions back into rock as you exit through the trail. And you do not turn right and go back towards the Devil's Kitchen, but you head straight up the canyon. And there's another section of, uh, of obstacles as the exit. But for the most part, you hit a secondary wash and it's pretty straightforward from here all the way out to the exit point of the trail. Um, still great scenery, but nothing difficult that would cause any type of specialty equipment or, or really uh, foresight. There are a couple places on the trail where the trail is less marked, so you do need to watch that carefully. And from this point on, you can drive out to see the confluence where the Green River and the Colorado meet each other. Uh, we did not have time today to go out and do that, so we opted to head back to the trailhead instead. But if you want to add another hour and a half to your, to your day, you can go out and take a look at that. In this case, though, we headed back to Elephant Hill and proceeded to drive backwards up the climb, the switchbacks, and headed on out towards home. Now, this is a long trail. So compared to most trails in Moab that take only a couple hours, we spent about 10 hours Moab down to the Needles District through this trail hiking, then back to Moab again that night. So plan ahead, great trail, great day if you can have the time to get out and go explore something new. I highly recommend it.